So a lizard hunt is basically us coming out. I mean, this doesn't look like your typical field site. This is a standard neighborhood. And we're coming out and we're looking for lizards on these uh, in people's front yards. And sometimes when they let us do it, we go into their backyards. And we're just coming out with our with our nooses and we're going up to the little lizards and we're, we're noosing them as a way to catch them. And we would love to be catching some native lizards to document some of them in this area, but all we see really are the Italian wall lizards. So most of what we're out here doing is catching the Italian wall lizards. Well, it's important to find out what's here because we know almost nothing about these Italian wall lizards. We know that they were introduced in 1994. We know that they've spread, but that's sort of it. So we also know in their native range that they eat smaller lizards. So are they out here? Are they competing with our native lizards? Um, when these lizards were introduced, did they carry some parasites with them that maybe they brought to our native lizards? Um, and maybe, because they do eat smaller lizards, maybe these guys actually are coming out and they're eating some of our native lizards when they're young. So we don't know any of that right now, and that's what we're out here trying to find out. So I think what's exciting about this is it really highlights that you know, the biodiversity story for LA is not just about our native species, but it's this combination of native species and non-native species, and sometimes the impact of those non-native species are having on our natives. These Italian wall lizards wouldn't be here if this neighborhood wasn't here. They are used to a Mediterranean climate. You know, they are from Mediterranean region, they are from Italy. They're used to a Mediterranean climate. They can go long periods without water, but the densities that we're seeing today, you're not gonna get densities like that unless you have water, you know, lots of insects that are hanging out in people's gardens. Um, so this is an interesting story of, you know, urbanized habitat allowing the establishment of these lizards and maybe they're having an impact on our native ones. You know, what the museum does, I mean, in the herpetology collection, we have a, a, almost 185,000 specimens. And those specimens, many of them are from Southern California, and they provide this excellent historical record. Now, what we don't have as much of is a huge number of specimens from, say, the last 10 years or the last 20 years. And so if we want to look at how species have responded to urbanization, we have this great historical record, and if we can get people participating in these citizen science projects, that's going to provide our modern day record. And we can now then you know, compare those modern day records to the historical record and see how species have been impacted by urbanization. And Rascals, which is Reptiles and Amphibians of Southern California, is a citizen science project where people literally, when they're out walking around, can pull out their smartphones and can take a photograph of a lizard. And then they can upload that photograph I think I'll send it via email to the museum or they can upload it to iNaturalist. And then we have a photo documented observation with you know latitude and longitude because most phones are able to produce that. And we have you know a date. So we get locality, date, and a photo to verify what it is. And what's great about that is we can learn about where these animals occur in you know all across Southern California. If people come to the museum, they can actually see a story that's very much related to this project by walking into the Nature Lab. And if you walk into the Nature Lab, you will see that we have a whole display about the Mediterranean house gecko. And the Mediterranean house gecko, the reason that we talk about that is because a father and son team were going out and taking photos of reptiles and amphibians that they saw. And they took a picture of a lizard they couldn't recognize, they didn't recognize. They sent it to the museum as part of a citizen science project and people at the museum were able to identify it as a Mediterranean house gecko. That turned out to be the first record of a Mediterranean house gecko in Los Angeles County. Myself and a research associate worked with that father and son, and uh, Reese and Will Bernstein are their names, and they actually just published that county record in a journal called Herpetological Review. So Reese, who is now 12 years old and in the seventh grade, is published in the peer-reviewed scientific literature. So when we tell people to go out and get these records, we're not just sort of oh, go collect data for the sake of, you know, collecting these observations. They're actually, they're getting used, and some of them are not just getting, you know, used for longer term studies, they're getting used immediately because they turn out to be really interesting and exciting finds, like that Mediterranean house. Guy.